Hello everyone, I am Eric Guido and this is Venice in the Kitchen. I have been waiting a long time to film this episode because this is going to be one of my favorite preparations, something that I love truly, hot wings. Like if I'm out with a friend and it could be any time of the day to be honest and we pass a place that advertises having great hot wings, I can almost guarantee you that we're going to stop in. But one problem I always had is that after that little guilty pleasure of hot wings, the next day I always felt horrible. The main reason was that the average place is making them in a classic style. They're making them in a deep fryer. But that got me thinking, do these really need to be made in a deep fryer soaked in oil? Can't they just be baked? Can't they be made at home? Can't they be made in a way that is not just a little bit more healthy, but maybe something that's also going to leave us feeling a little bit better? So that got me thinking of how I can make my own hot wings at home. And I'm going to show you today how you can do that. Now we're going to be doing it in the oven, but you could very easily apply what we're doing here today to a grill as well. But the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to make our own marinade, which is also going to double as our hot sauce for our wings. And I know what you're thinking, you can go out and buy a marinade, right? Well, yeah, you sure, you sure could, but you know, for me, a big part of it is I like to know what goes into my food. I like to be able to tailor things to my own personal tastes. And also the food I feed my family, I want to make sure I'm feeding them something healthy. And I can make as large amount of these sauces as I like, and I can store them as well. In the end, you do end up saving money. We're also going to be making one of my true favorite dressings in the world. We're going to make a blue cheese dressing from scratch. And the reason we're going to make it from scratch is that I have yet to find a blue cheese that I can buy in a store, blue cheese dressing, that I actually truly enjoy. What it comes down to is that we have a lot of perishable ingredients in blue cheese dressing. It's extremely difficult to put a good high quality blue cheese dressing on a store shelf. So we're just going to make it ourselves. And the best part about this, make more than you need for the occasion because this will keep in your refrigerator easily for a week or two, no doubt. Honestly, in this house, it won't last a week. But let's start really fast on making our marinade because basically what we're doing is we're preparing for the wings that we're going to be making tonight. We want to marinate them, but we also want to make sure that the chicken has a good amount of time to sit in that marinade and the marinade is also cool. So first thing we're gonna do here is I am going to take, we have a total one stick of butter. I'm gonna start melting one third of that stick. Other things that we have here. We have a teaspoon of minced fresh ginger. A teaspoon of the whites of a shallot. So basically what you do here is you wash these down, you trim off these parts here, and the solid piece in the middle you cut off the white, and then you basically do a mince of the white part. And you leave these pieces, we're going to use these as garnishes for later on. Then I have a teaspoon of garlic granules. I have a teaspoon of pepper. I have a teaspoon of smoky sea salt. I have the juice of one whole lemon. And then I have a half cup of my favorite hot sauce. Feel free to use whatever your favorite hot sauce is. So here we go. Our butter is melting in the pan. We're gonna get this started so that we can then move on to making our blue cheese dressing. This marinade is gonna be made very quickly. The most important thing is cooling it before we pour it on the chicken. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm going to attempt to cool it in an ice bath, which I've set up here, while we continue making the blue cheese dressing over there. Okay, so we're gonna go into the pan with our scallion and our ginger. And we're just gonna let this Bring the heat down a little bit. We just want to start getting the aroma coming out of the pan. Oh, there it is. Now, I'm going to go in with the hot sauce. I'll bring the heat up a little bit. 
I'm going to add our other two sticks of butter. And as you can see, I'm making more than I'm probably going to need for this tonight as well. Again, this is another item that I can very easily put in the refrigerator. The garlic, the pepper. juice and smoky sea salt. When a smoky sea salt is going to dissolve in here as the mixture warms. We now just want to bring this to a boil, let that butter melt. Smell of this is amazing. Uh, almost there. It's a very quick process. Yeah, we are just about there. You know another thing this is great on top of everyone? Popcorn. Amazing on top of popcorn. Okay. We'll move this into our bowl. So now we want to cool this down. We don't want to be putting a hot marinade on top of cold chicken that's going to sit in the refrigerator for a few hours. And this is going to go right into our ice bath. I'm going to add a little bit of water here. That's just to get the ice melting. Water nice and cold. To speed up this process, I'm going to stir this. Now do remember guys, I'm only doing this all at the same time for the benefit of trying to record this all at one time for everybody. I could have made this this morning, I could have made this last night, and it would have been perfect for today. The only reason we have to do this with the ice bath is for the magic of video. I'm going to leave this in the side to cool. Return our attention over here now. I am going to take quarter cup of sour cream. We're working our blue cheese dressing now. When you see how easy it is to make a high quality blue cheese dressing, quarter cup of mayonnaise. I like to use an avocado oil mayonnaise just because of the health benefits of avocado oil, but you can use any mayonnaise you like. Quarter cup Blue cheese. Okay, so let's talk blue cheese really quick. My favorite blue cheese to use for this preparation is actually Stilton. All right, but Stilton can certainly get expensive. What I like about Stilton is I like the moisture content in Stilton. It really does add a good creaminess to the, uh, to the dressing. However, there are plenty of blue cheeses you can use. You can use any blue cheese you like, uh, but if I'm not using Stilton, I'll usually go for a Gorgonzola, which is what we have here today. And it's a quarter cup of gorgonzola. So we have literally equal parts of sour cream, mayo, and blue cheese. And if I'm not using a gorgonzola, then the next one that I'll usually go for is I'll usually go for a buttermilk blue. It's a blue cheese made with buttermilk. I absolutely love the flavor that the buttermilk brings. You're going to see because we're also going to be adding some buttermilk to this mixture in just a minute. So I'm just stirring this around at the moment. What I have here is a mixture of a half teaspoon of minced onion and a half teaspoon of garlic granules together. The only reason they're together is to save space. They don't have to be together like this, but they both go into the recipe. And it's funny when you think about it, how many times I can tell you that I've been to a restaurant or a bar where they will talk about how they make their own blue cheese dressing. There's a good reason for that. Like I said, it's hard to find a good quality 
blue cheese dressing on the market. I'm adding one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Doesn't have to be apple cider vinegar. Another vinegar I like to use is white wine vinegar. Um, I like apple cider vinegar just because it adds that little extra like twang that I absolutely love. Then I'm gonna add two tablespoons of buttermilk. Put these on the side. As I'm stirring. Okay, so there's one more ingredient that goes into this that is not in front of us right now. So, if you've watched my videos in the past, you probably know I'm not a big fan of adding sugar to things. I try not to eat sugar as much as possible. And so, in this recipe, I would now add a teaspoon of sugar. But, for me personally, I'm actually going to go with something different. I'm going to go with a powdered stevia, which is basically my sugar alternative. Stevia comes from a, a leaf that is grown in South America, and it has literally something like 10 times the sweetness of sugar. So I'm basically just going to add 1 eighth of a teaspoon of stevia to this mix. Again, this is my own personal choice and diet. By all means, you know, add that teaspoon of sugar if you don't have any issues with sugar. If you do go for stevia though, I do recommend doing powdered stevia because stevia that is in liquid form sometimes has alcohol added to it or it'll have some kind of vegetable cellulose added to it, which is just, again, more things we don't need in our diet. That's why we're making this stuff from scratch. And speaking of vegetable cellulose, if you're going to get blue cheese for your blue cheese dressing, do get an actual hunk of blue cheese and basically break it up yourself. When you buy things like blue cheese crumbled in a supermarket, again, they're adding things like vegetable cellulose to the mix to keep the cheese from sticking to itself. And just so you know, if you happen to be gluten-free, like I am, the most common thing used to make vegetable cellulose is wheat. Okay, so this is pretty much well mixed together. And again, this is something that I wanted to make now, not later, because the more this has time to stay together, the more flavor it's going to come out, especially as that garlic and the onion start to really bring their flavors into the mix. I'm going to grab a container here to store this in. Like I said, guys, this will stay a week or two in the refrigerator, no problem, if it makes it that long. easily double this recipe if you need to make more. Why am I doing this? Well, I'll remember what this is, but for other people in this family that are not big blue cheese fans, I want to make sure they know that this is something that I created. This can now go in the refrigerator. i take a quick look over here at how we're doing with this sauce. It's looking pretty good. So you can see the ice is melting around here. The question is just how hot it is. Don't worry about the separation because remember this is a marinade and we are basically going to be cooking this one more time tonight before we really slather it on the chicken after it cooks. Okay, I'd say it's almost ready. As you can see, some of that butter is even starting to solidify again. Let me get some of the water out of this bowl. Just sit it over top. Away. I'm gonna put my blue cheese in the fridge and grab my chicken. So what I have here is about two pounds of chicken legs. We have the the wing and the leg itself. Uh, I like to always make a couple drumsticks too for my family. Uh, I'm not going to make this all with the hot sauce because some people prefer to do like a barbecue style, which is very easily done. 
And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to whip up a very quick marinade just for the barbecue ones. It doesn't need to be some insanely advanced technique or anything with this. We are literally just looking to add a little bit of flavor in here. So I'm going to take some olive oil. I'm going to take some vinegar, some garlic, and some salt and pepper. Measurement doesn't have to be perfect. You know, as they say, baking is a science, cooking is an art. You kind of get to know these things, but if I had to say what I'm doing here, I'm adding about one teaspoon of vinegar to about three tablespoons of olive oil. I'm adding a little bit of garlic granules, I'm not trying to overpower it, some salt, and some pepper. And that is basically just going to be the marinade that I'm going to use for the chicken that will not be getting the hot sauce. Okay. So I'm just going to split these up for the hot wing lovers versus the non-hot wing lovers. Like I said, I do have some drumsticks in here. One thing that I want you to keep in mind is that this recipe is really just intended for the wings. The drumsticks are going to need to have a little more cooking time later on in our segment than the wings themselves. Um, but again, you know, sometimes when you're having wings, especially if you're going to try and make it into a dinner versus it just being a, uh, an appetizer, you want to make sure there's a, a good amount of meat on the plate just in case people are still hungry. Do keep in mind that although wings are they're very rich, uh, that you know, there's not a lot of meat on a, on a chicken wing. And then I'm just going to split these up. Okay. Beautiful. I'm just going to test now to see the temperature of this. I don't mind if it's even just a little bit lukewarm, as long as it's not in any way, shape, or form hot. But again, guys, you would make this before the preparation so it could cool completely. We're doing it the way we're doing it today for timing alone. The solid elements, don't worry about that. That's a good sign. Yep, oh, we're beautiful, we're perfect. Magic the ice bath. Reality is restaurants use ice baths all the time. Almost any time something comes out of a hot oven, it's going to go into an ice bath if it's going to be saved for anything. It's going to go right in here with the chicken. Get as much out of there as we can. We certainly want to lose any of that. That is all really good stuff. You know, while we're doing this, I just thought to myself, what I'd like to add to that other marinade that we're doing for the barbecue wings. So I'm going to add a little smoky paprika. Just rinse my hand off. So on top of what we did there before, just going to add... half a teaspoon smoky paprika. The smoky paprika is basically a sweet paprika with a little bit of smoky uh, smoke added to it. If they physically smoke the paprika, not add to it. But it really brings a lot of flavor and aromas to the mix. That's just going to go in there. Okay, so, nice and tight seal on our bags. This chicken is now going to marinate. This is the chicken that's destined to be barbecue wings. And this 
Remember your hot wings. And you notice there's a lot of marinade in here. That's because that marinade is going to be our sauce. And what we're going to do is we're going to end up cooking that down while the wings are cooking later on tonight. These are going to go in the refrigerator now. And they're going to stay there until I am an hour before cooking. So I'm going to take it out an hour before I'm going to start cooking to let them come to room temperature. And then you guys are going to join me again. But one thing I realized while I was doing this, you know, I'm sitting here talking to you and cooking at the same time. Sometimes you forget little things. Well, I'm glad I remembered we didn't season our blue cheese dressing. So while I put these in the fridge, let me just grab that really quick. You know, one of the things they taught us in school, taste, taste, taste. It's extremely important. If you don't taste, you have no idea what you are serving to your customers. Nice little tasting spoon. Let's open this up. This is really too taste. And I've been doing this for a while, and you get a feel for what you're going to want to add. If I had to, if I had to give you a an actual amount of salt to pepper I'm adding, I would say it's probably about half teaspoon of salt to a quarter teaspoon of pepper. But in the end, every time I make this, it is literally the process of what I just did, where I am shaking some salt and pepper into the mixture. Try to get a nice, even taste of this. Oh my god. It'd be hard, <laughs> hard not to eat that right now. I'm going to just give it another crack or two of salt. A quick spin with my clean spoon. Like I said, it's going to go into the fridge now. It's going to stay there. It's going to marinate. It's going to get all good. It's going to be ready for tonight when we continue this. And the fact is, all the hard stuff now has been pretty much done. This is the hardest part of the whole preparation. All right, guys, I'll see you later on tonight. We're going to finish this up and make some hot wings. Hey, guys, we're back, and we are ready to take the next step. Uh, what I've already done here is I have trimmed up some carrots and some celery into bite-sized pieces. I'm sure we've all had hot wings in uh, our favorite bars and pubs in the past. These are these are a perfect combination. They're palate cleansers. They're there to make sure that you have something else to dip into your, your sauce and something to help your palate recover from the heat and the uh, the richness of the chicken. I've also chopped up my scallion. Uh, this is the garnish. This is more of the green part of the scallion. We're going to get to this one really plating. And so that is all set. I have out my blue cheese dressing and I also pulled out some ranch. And the reason I pulled out some ranch is that you know, I, I don't know about you guys, but there are people that just love ranch dressing with their hot wings. And there are people that just detest blue cheese. So we have both. Over here, I've already started our process. I took my chicken out about an hour beforehand, and there's a very good reason for that. Number one, you want it to come to room temperature, but number two, look how chunky the sauce looks right now. That's all the butter in there. That solidified because it was in the refrigerator for all that time. So we're going to be basically melting this down. And I have my broiler on high, and I have my rack set about six to eight inches uh, below the boiler. Now you'll also notice I have those chicken uh, drumsticks in there. They started about 10 minutes ago uh, because they need that extra time to cook. Now with these, I've already started to lay it out. We have a, a sheet pan with uh, foil lined, and I like to put two racks here just because I want a lot of airflow uh, around these wings. We're going to be cooking them underneath the broiler. We want the broiler heat to come down and then bounce right back up to keep on cooking them. And I've basically laid them out so that the wings that were in the marinade that will end up in the barbecue are here, and then the hot sauce are here. Now, with the ones that are being marinated for the barbecue, you don't have to worry about the marinade too much because it's really mostly oil. But the ones that we're going to be doing, the hot wings, you do want to get as much of this off of the wings now as possible. Because keep in mind, even though there's a lot of butter in here, there's a lot of other stuff too. And the more moisture on these, the, uh, the harder it's going to be for them to cook. And we want to be able to take this sauce and we want to really slather them with this sauce after they get crispy underneath the broiler. So basically what I had done with all of these before uh, coming back to you guys is I did this exact process of going through here and just getting as much of the marinade off of them as possible. I also mentioned you guys could do this on the grill, and you totally can. 
Basically, if you're going to do this in the grill, you would set up your grill with an even layer of charcoal across the entire bottom. You don't want the coal too close to the chicken because there's a lot of fat here. And if this fat starts dripping, you might have a flare up. You'd basically put the, the chicken wings across the grill with coals low and then cook them about 10 minutes on each side. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be cooking these about 10 to 12 minutes on each side underneath the broiler. Before I put them there, I'm going to give it a little crack of salt for seasoning. And then these are going to go under the broiler. Like I said, six to eight inches below. Broiler on high. I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes. Like I said, this is going to be about 10 to 12 minutes, but I want to check it at 10 just to make sure that it's not cooking faster than I expected or slower than I expected. Now, while we're also doing this, I'm going to move my marinade to a saute pan. Now, I don't need to start cooking this now. In fact, it's better if I warm it up later, but I want to get it in here because the heat that's coming up from the broiler is going to warm this up and melt the butter, and then we can basically just bring it up to temp and allow it to come to a, a quick boil. And we're going to let it boil for about a minute or two before tossing it with the hot wings. Like I said, guys, the hardest part was what we did earlier today. This is all the easy stuff. Get as much that as you can. I said those hard, those solid parts, that's butter. If you would have seen this when it first came out, you would have been thinking, is that a sauce or is that a solid? But it's going to come together really quick. You see, it's already just from the heat coming up from the broiler and below it. It's already starting to look like the sauce that we had before. We'll finish that up a little bit later. This pot you can ignore because this is the vegetable I always insist on serving to my kids. And then over here for the barbecue uh, uh, barbecue chicken wings, like I said to you guys in the past, I'm going to give you a barbecue sauce recipe. I absolutely promise. But I've already packed this episode full of so many recipes, I didn't want to overwhelm everybody. So basically at this point I would say, use your favorite barbecue sauce for this process. We are going to be warming this up so that when it goes onto the wings, it goes on hot. But right now what I've taken is about a half a cup of one of our favorite barbecue sauces. It's in this pot and it's basically waiting to be warmed. So, while that's going, and while we have a couple minutes here, let's talk about wine. Wine and hot wings, or let's just say in this episode, beverage and hot wings. Because hot wings, I mean, come on, this is, this, is, this is comfort bar food, right? I mean, absolutely. I cannot dismiss the fact that one of the best pairings with hot wings is beer. So, what I've done here is I've actually pulled two of my favorites uh, that could easily be paired with both these preparations. So, for instance, with the hot wings, I would go probably with the white spear. And with the barbecue wings, I would go more for the dunkel. It's a darker, richer style. They basically match the two dishes really well. And this really easily bridges into our wine pairings. So we have a bunch of possibilities here. But two very different tastes when it comes to the, the, the wings. We have the hot wings. And when you have any kind of really spicy food, you don't want to have something that is over-oaked. Well, I shouldn't say over-oaked, but showing its oak. Nor do you want to have one that's too tannic. You want to look for something that is typically low alcohol, and you want to look for something that usually has a good amount of acidity. So I'm just going to go across the board here to show you what two different wines would pair well with these courses. So when it comes to the hot wings, the spicy side, I love going with high elevation Grenache. Grenache in France, Garnacha in Spain. This is coming from the Grados Mountains. And what I love about these is that they have so much purity, they see no oak. They do see large wooden vats, but they don't have any oak influence whatsoever. And so what you get is pure, juicy Grenache. These are beautiful wines. They pair really well with spicy foods. They pair really well with chicken as well. This is a perfect way to go. Another great way to go with your spicy option, go with rosé. So here we have a wine that is some 12% alcohol, high acidity, great fruit, just a tiny tad hint of sweetness, perfect pairing with your hot wings. Another great wine for your spicier wings. So you would go with something like a, like a, a off dry Riesling, like a, a, a Cabinet or Spatlason. But one thing I love doing is I love going to a late 
Harvest Verdicchio. So when I say late harvest, this is not a sweet wine. There's certainly a, a perception of ripeness here, but what you really get is you get the textural depth and the intensity. Think, think Austrian, uh, Austrian Riesling, some of the bigger Rieslings that you might have had in your life. That's what you find here, but with a, a ripeness and a depth that you get from fruit, in some cases, boisterous-sized fruit, that makes this wine so complex and such a great pairing to a spicy dish. Now, to bridge the gap between the two different wings, whether you're gonna go for the spicy hot wings or you're gonna go for the barbecue wings, a great way to go with wings is champagne. Champagne is fantastic with wings. High acidity, you're not gonna get some big oak influence here. These are fantastic. They cleanse the palate. They don't interact with the, the heat of the wings to actually make it more painful on the palate. Perfect. Now, the wine that I wouldn't necessarily put with my hot wings, but I would totally put my barbecue wings, Red Zinfandel. I mean, Red Zinfandel and barbecue wings. If this is something you haven't experienced before, you definitely need to try. This is a pairing made in heaven. Okay, so I have about five minutes on my timer, but I'm gonna give you guys a quick break. I'm gonna have a glass of wine. I hope you will as well. And we're gonna come right back when the time comes to flip these. Okay, we're back. Our wings have almost reached that 10 minute point. And when I'm looking in on them, I think that we're, we are pretty much right there. When that timer goes off, we're gonna be ready to flip these. So first thing I'm gonna do now is just gonna put this up over a low flame. I don't want to bring this up too fast. I really just want it to come up nice and slow and come to a simmer and then to a boil. Like I said, you want to boil it for about a minute or two. You, uh, you did have this sitting with uh, raw chicken for about four or five hours. I'm also going to bring this up on a very low flame on the back here. I want to keep it low. Remember, there's a lot of sugar in barbecue sauce. You don't want to burn the barbecue sauce. So let's take a look at these wings. Oh yeah. Anybody that ever told you you could not get crispy wings in an oven without coating them with flour or something like that, as you can see, they were incorrect. So what we're gonna do really quick is we are gonna give these each a flip so we can get them nice and crispy on both sides. And yes, I, I know my hands are like oven mitts. Uh, I would not advise you to flip these with your fingers. I've been doing this so long that it Unfortunately, it doesn't hurt anymore. As they told me back in the restaurant days, that's not something to be proud of, by the way. All right, these have been flipped. Now I'm gonna hit them with salt one more time on this side. And they're gonna go right back in. Back under the broiler. I'm going to set my timer for another 10 minutes. Both of these items are slowly warming here. There we go. Beautiful. Like I said, we're going to bring this up to a simmer and then to a boil. I'm going to start dressing my plates up a little bit here. Just getting ready. This is for extra barbecue sauce for the barbecue wings, but this one is gonna be for the blue cheese. So this has been in the refrigerator. All the flavors have been melding together. It is in a beautiful state. Okay, here we are. Let's see, 10 minutes is up. And these look perfect. So I pull these out, put them up here. I'm also going to mention to you earlier that I was making some drumsticks. I'm gonna move those up to let those finish. Oh yeah, those look beautiful. Our sauce, which had come to a boil and I brought it down in heat a little bit just so it didn't boil away is nice and hot. And what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to put the wings that are the hot wings right in here. 
And yes, they are hot, so please be careful. Now I'm just gonna give them a little toss in the sauce and leave them here on top of the burner for a minute. Put my burner on low. As for the barbecue wings, turn the burner off there. This sauce is all nice and hot now. I'm going to brush these with the barbecue sauce. And these are going to go back in the oven just for a couple of minutes for this to basically just start cooking on here while I plate or hot wings. I'll put this over here, hot wings off the flame, and these back in the oven just to get a little more heat and let that sauce cook on. These are ready. And they are hot. Add some of the sauce on here. Beautiful. Clean up the rim of the plate a little bit. A little garnish. Scallion. Let's put a little bit on the blue cheese dressing. The uh, ex-restaurant chef in me has to take this off the plate <laughs> because I can't have it not be perfect. Okay, that's beautiful. Those are perfect as they are right now. As for our barbecue, i pull these out. Remember, the barbecue sauce was hot, so you don't need to worry if we put these upside down, right side up, because we're going to be brushing them with a little bit more sauce before serving them. Put that out of the way. Clean the rim up a little bit. Brush a little more of the hot sauce. Not hot sauce, but hot barbecue sauce. And the rest of this goes into the ram again, so people can dip if they see fit. Ooh, this smells amazing. It's, this is the moment that I miss the days that I would eat barbecue style hot wings. And same garnish. I'm going to go just for a little bit of scallion. People that don't like them can always shake them off. So here we go. We have our hot wings with our homemade blue cheese dressing. And then we have our barbecue wings all ready to go. All right, guys. That's basically it. So I'm going to put these in the table and call the kids in. 
and I'll see you guys next time for another episode of Venice in the Kitchen.